toy moves in a variety of different ways, and sometimes it moves in ways that we can only describe as a pattern. So, let's take a look at some really popular ones. Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, sharing with you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, I want to dive into five of my favorite poi patterns. Yes, five more of them. And there's a twist to how this list is arranged. But before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Fire Mecca, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterror Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these awesome companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links down in the description of this video. And special thanks to the non-business friend of the channel, Becca Bekkonen. Thank you so very much for supporting my channel, my work, and my mission. So I've already covered five of my favorite poi patterns that I'll go ahead and link to down in the description as well as up in the cards that all have one thing in common. They are poi patterns that primarily work by thinking about them in terms of the shapes that the poi follows as it moves around in space, creating cool trails. But that's not the only way that I think about poi patterns, and I think it's probably not the only way that a lot of people think about poi patterns. Sometimes you put together a series of poi movements, and you can't point to just one thing in there that is a trick, and you also can't point to anything in there that's necessarily a shape. So, there's kind of this weird in-between that these poi patterns occupy, and those are the patterns that I want to talk about in this video. So, go ahead and strap yourselves in and pull out your own set of poi and see if you can follow along with these five picks. Pattern number one, horizontal stacking. Goodness, so this is absolutely the pattern that launched an entire framework of poi tricks. This pattern first appeared in Ivan Mel Gorbanov's landmark tech poi video, Red Pants, and it set a whole flurry of tech poi spinners all over the world off to the races. See, a lot of us realized that the pattern that Mel was working with there had a lot of individual pieces that you could mix, match, cut, copy, and paste in a variety of different orders, and it wound up giving rise to an entire framework of new poi tricks. In particular, Leo Akaza put together one of the most comprehensive videos on this topic, which I'll go ahead and link to down in the description. But this was the pattern that started us all off, and it is still one of the best examples of this type of poi move. And speaking of patterns that became unexpectedly popular, the next entry on this list is one that was created by somebody who, quite frankly, could have a lot of entries on this list, but I had to pick just one. Pattern number two, Kate's Combo. So for those of you who don't know, Kate McCoy is one of those absolute legends of the tech poi world who managed to be so incredibly successful specifically because she could outthink just about any guy out there in the tech poi world. And this pattern in particular was one that she did frequently and a lot of us absolutely loved. It involves switching back and forth between two different timing and direction modes while also engaging in stalls along the way. It's a pretty easy idea to understand, but it's deceptively difficult to actually do it in practice. To say nothing of the fact that Kate is just one of those spinners who is so incredibly clean in everything that she does, she made you not just find this pattern fascinating, but really, really, really want to do it as cleanly as she could. Of course, this pattern has both in-spin and anti-spin variations. My personal favorite, of course, is the in-spin one, and maybe in another video we'll take a look at the anti-spin one. But I figure sharing is caring, and this is a pattern definitely worth sharing. Okay, so hopefully it is becoming more and more clear that in my mind, patterns is a very encompassing term, and so this list is gonna get kinda weird. In fact, the next entry is gonna get super weird. Trick number three, the Fantastic Four. The Fantastic Four is part of an entire family of poi tricks that revolve around bouncing the poi around different surfaces of the body while both poi are being held by the same hand. Perhaps the most famous example of this family is the one-handed Superman, but I'll confess that I think the Fantastic Four is a much more interesting pattern, if for no other reason than it kind of breaks my ability to describe what exactly is happening with the poi in the course of it. Is this bouncing back and forth between a pair of corkscrews? Is this a diagonal plane move? What exactly is the pattern that each poi is doing as it's going up and around? 
The entire thing is just kind of a mishmash of different stuff that shouldn't work, but somehow does. I also love that this is a trick that has so many applications. I've taught this not only to poi spinners and glow stringers, but also to meteor spinners as well as people that spin orbits. It's a surprisingly versatile move, and well, let's face it, it looks cool as hell. All right, so we've covered patterns from Poi masters such as Mel and Kate McCoy. Are there other masters out there from whom we have learned an incredible amount of cool Poi patterns? Why, yes. In fact, there are. Pattern number four, Udistals. Now, I doubt most people think of this as a poi pattern so much as a framework within which a bunch of different poi patterns can work. But I disagree because I think that all the different patterns kind of blend together to a certain extent into something that we all expect when we see this move. See, really when it comes right down to it, Yuta's combining together plane breaking as well as some great pirouette work, creating something that isn't just eye-catching, but also actually moves through the space in a way that most poi moves don't. And y'all know how much I love my poi dance. Yuta stalls were probably the first poi patterns I ever learned that actually forced me to learn some degree of poi dance. There's really no other way to engage with them. Add to that the fact that there's at least three or four different families of poi tricks on display in just this one pattern. I think it's pretty cool that Yuta found something that was at once so incredibly simple and eye-catching, but at the same time so incredibly complex on a theoretical level so very early on in the poi world. All right, so if you've come this far, I have a quick favor to ask before I show you my last pick. See, if you've come this far, I'm pretty sure that my deductive reasoning has revealed to me an important truth about you. You like poi tricks, and maybe poi spinning in general, and if indeed that's the case, I make lots of videos on those topics. So, if you wouldn't mind, please give the channel a subscribe or ring the bell, and if you do that, you'll be one of the first to know when I upload a new video, and all of us win. So without further ado, my final pick for my favorite poi pattern is... Pattern number five, Stall Chasers. So this was informally labeled the trick of the year back in 2009, and there's a reason for it. Everyone wanted to learn it. Now, technically speaking, this is actually a Yuta move as well. He was seen performing it in wheel plane instead of wall plane, and somebody got the bright idea of switching the planar orientation of the pattern. And as it turned out, they gave rise to what has become one of the most ubiquitous poi patterns of all time in the process. Like, seriously, I remember a year where every single fire festival I went to had people trying to learn how to do this outside of the classes. It came about and became so popular so quickly, nobody could even put together a workshop on it. And it's easy to see why. The amount of fine control that it takes over your stalls in order to pull this one off is really intense. We have that lovely little anti-gravity moment going across the top where the poi line up just so. I've always loved this as a trick for showing off virtuosity with stalls and with momentum control. And that's why it's my final pick for five more poi patterns that you want to know. What did you think of this list? Would all of these patterns have wound up on your own list? Or are there some patterns that I missed that you think should have been included? I do know that Kate had her own variation on those stall chasers that was really, really popular for a while, but I figured I had to go with the original on this. What did you think of that choice? Let me know down in the comments. This video would not have been possible without my amazing supporters on Patreon. In particular, I would love to give a shout out to my Flow patrons who are listed on screen right now. If you like these videos, there's an easy way that you can make sure that I make more of them, and that is to go sign up to support them over on Patreon. You can do that at patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi. I will include a link down in the description as well as up in the cards if you are watching on YouTube. Supporting these videos means that I get to spend more time in doing so rather than doing other things that brings money in the front door. So if you like these videos and you want to see them continue and you want me to maintain this level of quality or better, go sign up. Please and thank you. Are you interested in seeing five more poi patterns that I absolutely love? 
Excellent. I'm going to go ahead and link to another video that I did that features poi patterns that are centered around the trails that poi leave behind as they swing through the air on screen, as well as I will link to it down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to get out and flow today yourself, and I'll see you with a brand new video real soon. Take care and have a good one. Peace.